Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we build drones to do our bidding. In the last episode, we spent time building this specific drone to look for ore. It's not too fancy or anything. It's pretty basic, but handles well. It will, however, make a great starting point to show you how we do projectors and blueprints and mix it up with a couple of timer blocks. This might not be the greatest of rovers to do that with, but it'll give you the general idea when you build a more advanced small ship or large ship. First off, to do a blueprint, you really want to separate whatever you're going to take the blueprint of away from other builds. For this, we're just going to remote access, control the grid, and probably drive it out on this ice somewhere away from the rest of the structures. Now you don't have to go too far away. We just want it in a good placement so we can take that screenshot capture and turn it into a blueprint. And the other thing that you might want to consider is your lighting. It's important because whenever you put it on the Steam Workshop, you want to consider how other people are going to see the picture of this. Unfortunately, the blueprint automatically puts the picture on there for you, but you can take other pictures if you take screenshots and alter them before you put them on the Steam Workshop. Let's see, how do we get the good angle of this? The horizon is pretty cool over there. But I can't really see the structure itself. If you run into this issue, you may be able to just use the lights on your suit. Get a little bit closer. And there we are. Now you can see the difference between the frame and the wheels. After you have the placement like you want, all you have to do is hit Control and the B button. If done correctly, it should open your blueprint window. From here, I'm going to go ahead and rename this so it doesn't get lost in our entire list of blueprints. Maybe Remote Rover 1? Mm, nah, we'll just call it Remote Rover. I think that's fine. Then just click OK. And we'll have to find this on the list. It is pretty easy. If you just type in what you're looking for, it should appear. And there it is. From here, you can see it's loaded. And later on, I'll show you how you add it to the projector. You also have the option directly to publish, which will open the Steam Workshop and allow you to share it with other people. You can also take a different screenshot if you want. For now though, I think we'll leave it as is, and head back to see how we would set this up on a projector. I did adjust these doors earlier, so hopefully they don't give us any funny business this time. Over here is my standard movable building platform. I've already put a projector on top of it. Just to check them out. Hmm, there's a lot of stuff on this list. Let me clear this out for you real quick. We don't need to display all the corner lights. They'll just become a distraction, make it harder to find anything. And maybe get rid of these batteries. We don't need to monitor those the entire time. Okay. So we have our event controller, and we have it set up to react to this platform. So when the platform is all the way down, it turns the projector and the small merge block off. I set the threshold to 0.1%. If you put it at 0%, sometimes there's a glitch and it won't work. Next, I added this piston here. This is the small piston that increases or decreases the height of the platform. And of course, if you had anything additional attached that you wanted to do at the same time, 
you could just use the AND gate. But in this case, we only have the one piston. Then, under Select Actions, we start out with a small build merge block. Now this will change as I go over how to add them to the timer blocks. The reason being is, if you put something else, say this projector right here, onto the event controller, you would think that it would activate both of them at the same time and deactivate at the same time, but they do not. One is indicated for when you match that requirement of equal to or less than, and the other one is the opposite function of it. So it kicks on when it's not in that level. Now for the projector, oh, I mean the other even controller, we have set this to equal or greater than the same piston, but a threshold of 95%. So that's almost all the way extended for this little piston. And for that, we want it to turn on the small merge block and the projector at the same time. So for this, again, I'm going to demonstrate how this actually does not function correctly if you do it this way and why you should use a timer block. But just for the heck of it, we're going to indicate it as turning it on. As for the last one, we indicated turning it off. Okay. Now for your projector. On a projector, we're going to start it in the off position because it is currently in the down position for the platform art. So when I hit this button, if it was meant correctly on the event controllers, it would also turn on as you saw the small merge block turn on. But like I said, that's just not the case. Unfortunately, one is within range, one is without range. So in order to alleviate this, we are going to have to put those two items on a timer block. And as I move this back down, you'll see that it does not turn both of them off. It will only turn off the small merge block. Let's remedy this situation. I'm going to add two timer blocks. One is going to be used for extending the piston and turning the items on. And the other one is going to be for decreasing the piston and turning them back off again. We'll go to the first timer block. And we'll just have to set up the actions. I really don't care about the delay at this point. But on this first timer block, what we're going to do is take the small merge block and have it turn on. And then have the projector also turn on. And that's pretty much all we need to do to the timer block for number two. Then we'll go to event controller. And on the event controller, we'll select the actions and remove these two. Because they're not necessary at this point. We want to put the timer block on here instead. And we'll go ahead and put timer block two on here. When we do this, we want it to immediately trigger, not just start a timer. We want it to actually react in real time at that specific point. So then we go back to the first event controller and basically do the same thing. But before we can do that, we need to set up the timer block three. This is where we're going to do the exact opposite of what we did for timer block two. Where did I put this small merge block? Oh, there it is. Okay, so we add the small merge block. We want that one to turn off. Then we need the projector and we want that one to turn off as well.
That should do it. Both of them are currently scheduled to be off. However, we're not going to have that until we completely set the rest of this up. The projector is still on. So the first event controller, let's go ahead and remove the small merge block and the projector control. And add timer block three. Sometimes when you have a lot of items, I find it a lot easier just to search it by name. And again, on timer block three, we're going to select trigger now. We do not want to delay. Then we'll go to the projector and make sure it's off because we're in the down position. Now, once you have this completely set up, both items should automatically turn on when we're fully extended on the piston. And there you have it. Now, this might not seem too important right now, but once we set up the projector, it'll make a lot more sense. Might as well raise this back up, turn the projector back on. And then we'll configure our projector to build the remote rover. Select your projector, blueprints, and just find the remote rover like we did the first time. Now, instead of clicking on anything else, we're going to double click on the symbol for the remote rover. This automatically prompts it into our projector. And of course, it might give you this warning that multiple grids are not supported, but it is actually not multi-grid. It's just because we're building from a large platform with a modified small platform. Now you can see this thing isn't quite lined up with our small merge block. We definitely want to recenter it. Once you do turn on the projector and select the blueprint, you may have to do a little bit of tweaking on the location itself, on which direction is pointing. So if we go to the static grid and go back to this projector, you can kind of see through this window, but if it's not that clear, you can always go back to your options on the main page and adjust the transparency. This should be the pitch, so if I turn this to about 90 degrees, there, we pretty much have it lined up, but I think it's got to go forward a little bit. And then maybe vertical down. What we're trying to do is get the small merge block on the blueprint to match the small merge block on the platform. Yes, looks like one down and two forward. Back to the projector. So one and two on the forward. For some builds, this may take you a while to get the hang of before it matches. I think that might do it. Worst case scenario, you just check it before you start. Yep, it's definitely lined up. You know it's correct if the first block, which is that small merge block, is shaded in deeper than what the other ones are. That means it'll allow us to weld it. And there you go, and the next blocks start to formulate automatically. You can change these settings, so if, say, you don't want to see the entire hologram, We can go back to the projector and turn that off so you're only going to see the buildable area. First, we have heat projection. So every time your projector turns on and off, uh, the same projection will come back up in the same sequence. And then show only buildable area. 
There you go. Now you can see it's only the blocks that we are able to weld. If we lower this down, you'll see that they'll immediately disappear because the projector turns off. And, of course, our small merge block kind of fell off there. Not a big deal. If we raise this back up, this time it should only show us the small merge block once it turns back on. And there it is. But as I weld this, again, the next buildable blocks appear. Overall, it's a pretty easy setup, and it becomes very handy when you're trying to do multiple of the same ship or the same rover. For now, I'm just going to lower this and keep it off. Well, I hope this video truly helps you become a better space engineer. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to take a look at them. I appreciate it.